Hello and welcome. This is Layron with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Today I'm going to work with some more chat GPT stuff. I'm going to kind of do like a, an overview and also show you some methods and some things that I've come across uh, since I started this journey. Now this is uh, content for personal use. I do not intend to use this for any sort of commercial applications at this point. So if you're somebody that's anti-AI or you don't like uh, artificial intelligence, I apologize up front. Uh, if that triggers you, then do not watch this video. Um, so for, for uh, people that want to learn how to use this as a tool and are curious about it, or they're kind of on the fence about it, this might be a little bit helpful for you. I'm combining this with the Fantasy Grounds Unity platform, but you can really do this with any sort of virtual tabletop. And the tools and the prompts that I'm going to create can be very much tailored and changed to any rule set that you'd like. I'm using the D&D 5e rule set, but if you like Pathfinder or one of the other science fiction uh, virtual tabletops, that's that's all that's all good. I, I don't have any bias on that. That, that. This is kind of universal, but I just really want you to see the concepts, not so much uh, what the exact details of every single little story element and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to try to bore you with those type of details when it comes to creating content. Although we are going to uh, announce some of that stuff and we're going to make it to where you're going to be able to kind of, you know, see what we're doing and, and that sort of thing. So without further ado, I'm going to go to my handy dandy notepad plus plus. So this is what I use quite often. And a lot of the community members that develop content also use this sort of program. This is Notepad++. It is free. So what I have done is I had pre-typed out a lot of different prompts that essentially make it easier for me to store all this text. And if, when I come down to the length and the, the lines that are available in this, um, I want to try to keep this as small as I can. But in this case, so much detail is going into this that this uh, particular information has kind of become overwhelming and a little bit too much for ChatGPT. So you want to keep your uh, your requests and your content down to about a thousand words or less. You don't want to give it a book because it's not going to remember half of that stuff and there is a token limit. So the token limit depends on which version you're using, and that's generally all the spaces and the words and the phrases within your content. But this stuff that I have right here is a little excessive. So I'm going to leave out the rollable lists because I really don't think I need these right now. Um, I will introduce them if they are going to be useful later on. So as I create, I'm going to add that in if I need to. Same thing with the NPC stat block. So these are formatted for Fantasy Grounds. So if they are going to be parsed in the Fantasy Grounds tools for the rule set, it will take those in better. And that's really uh, one of the stumbling blocks that you'll have if you're building content or you're making, you know, doing conversions and such, is that you'll need some sort of uh, kind of a way to uh, put in the content so that it actually works. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm only going to copy and paste the stuff that goes with the actual story part, and then I'll introduce the other part. So I don't want to take a huge whopping amount of text. As it is, this is already excessive. I mean, this is a lot. Um, you kind of want to work in bite sizes. So if you're going to do something like this and you do a large adventure, you're definitely going to want to do it in pieces. So I recommend you do the outline and then start another conversation that has to do with the story and then do another conversation that has to do with all the NPCs. That way it's compartmentalized. And as you use the tool, it's less likely that the um, chat GPT is going to forget the details. If you give it too much details, it's going to forget. And what, what I mean by forget is it'll start talking some random stuff that has nothing to do with the context that you were trying to convey in the beginning. So as you get further down into the, the tool, it's going to start forgetting. So first things first is I'm going to grab the text that I want. And this is just for the story formatting. So uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to leave out the rollable lists which are ways to make tables and fantasy grounds. And I'm going to leave out the NPC formatting for now and just focus more on the venture. 
So this information here is something that I'd put together myself, and it took me probably a good month or so to do it, or maybe longer. But right here is where I'm going to start, and this says professional adventure design template for the D&D 5e rule set. Use as a guide to create an adventure with detail and substance. Start with the following. And then I give it the, the text, and then I'm going to also give it some kind of theme. So uh, if any of you are watching, if you want this to do a certain theme or maybe a certain city or perhaps a certain um, adventure or anything like that, you know, uh, I'm open for suggestion because I want to um, make this a little bit more inclusive and less me babbling about just chat GPT and fantasy grounds. So if you want to use chat GPT to create content, uh, this is more what I'm kind of focused on, but like I said, you can use this in other um, virtual tabletops. But this one is tailored for Fantasy Grounds a little bit more when it comes to tables and NPCs and such, cause, so I can use the parsing tools. So I'm going to go to the ChatGPT program and bring up some content that that I have here. So this is something I was working on last night, and as you can see, it's pretty excessive. It goes on and on and on. So you want to try to you know, avoid that if you can. The other thing is I'm using a paid version of ChatGPT. So this is ChatGPT4, which you have to pay for. And I'm using it, some beta plugins, which you had to sign up for. So you may not have these. You might be just using ChatGPT 3.5. The only reason I'm using 4 is because it's a little bit more intuitive. And I have these plugins that allow me to fetch things from the internet such as wiki guides and, and that sort of thing but if you're going to use the free version 3.5 it's going to be quite crowded you may not get the results that you want because it's overloaded and on top of that you know you're not if you're still kind of new it can be a little frustrating so you kind of have to practice with it uh, 3.5 will do most of the stuff you need anyways you don't have to have 4.0 and all these plugins so i just kind of let you know up front most people kind of got on the bandwagon a little later. So when the uh, release of 3.5 came out, uh, I was there. And then when 4 came out, I was already kind of practicing and getting used to the tool. So just kind of kind of let you know. So anyway, so I'm going to go with a new chat. And this is my blank slate. I'm going to select uh, GPT-4. So this only comes up like if you have the paid version. And then for plugins, which I don't necessarily need them, uh, in, but if in case I want to pull something from uh, a wiki guide for lore or for more information or if I'm trying to build some kind of uh, cohesiveness and kind of lore friendly content, I'm going to use the plugins. And the ones I have loaded right now is Prompt Perfect, which allows you to type perfect uh, crafted prompts every time. I don't re really necessarily buy that, so I don't really need that. I, I've tried it. It works pretty good but it doesn't give me exactly what I want. Um, the access link plugin allows you to access links on the web. And this is, this is the one I use a lot for gathering information from like wiki user guides and such. I don't use the content from D&D Beyond or from PDFs, but you could if, if you have counts for that. Uh, Photorealistic is a plugin that allows you to generate photorealistic prompts for mid-journey. So if you use Midjourney AI for art, this kind of helps create, generate the uh, prompts for those. The only problem with this is they're very long and wordy. They're really great. They're, they're awesome. But chat GPT, or, uh, the art, um, photorealistic uh, Midjourney, doesn't need those long prompts anymore. Uh, so some of that information is probably overkill. And then there's some other plugins here, like the Link Reader. It reads all kinds of content, like links, web pages, PDFs, PowerPoints, images, words, other document. I use that too. So you don't need both of these, Access Link or the other one. So I'm just going to leave the Link Reader. Those kind of will cancel each other out and they fight each other. They kind of do the same thing. So I, you do one or the other, so that way you don't get you know messed up. And then there's one called Video Insights, which interacts with online video platforms like YouTube or Daily Motion. And what it will do is it'll pull the chat or the um, the text from these 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 types of uh, documents or videos and compress it into a useful 
text object, I found out there's a one hour limit. So if you have a long video, it's not going to work. So this works on really good short videos. So if you have an instructional video and you want to use this for capturing the text and kind of pulling it in and kind of making your own little guide or something like that, that's what I use it for is kind of for informational, like pulling off the the text or summarizing the video or anything like that. So that's what that's good for. So those are the only plugins I use. There's tons of others, but most of them are integrated with stuff I'm not I'm not using chat GPT for. I'm using this as a, a starting point and as inspiration and as a tool, not not for everything. So uh, keep that in mind that it's a tool, not not a way of life. So without further ado, I'm gonna copy and paste the information that I created here. And I'm going to copy this. I ran this through Grammarly and a couple other spell checks, so I got rid of most of the most of the bogus typing and formatting because I'm not a very good typist. So that's why I use ChatGPT mostly. So I'm going to paste this in, and as you can see, it's all set there. If any of you have a suggestion as to what kind of biome or what sort of background or you know anything in the D&D rule sets, maybe something in the Forgotten Realms or maybe something else. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? Uh, I have the template here, and it's ready to go. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, what's going on? Uh, just going to do some uh, chat GPT story information, and I would like to get a theme from somebody to kind of create content with. So it can be from... An ex desert biome. Okay, so desert biome it is. Anywhere in particular in the realms or just wherever? Because uh, we can specify forgotten realms and then we can just say desert biome or we can keep it more generic and, and leave it that way. It does have some information or insight on the different settings and such. It doesn't know everything, but it knows enough to, to pull on it. So desert biome is sounds good. So... The first statement up here, okay, Honorash, okay, cool. So the, the first statement here is professional adventure design template for D&D 5e rule set, use as a guide. So I'll say use the template below as a guide. Um, use the template below as a guide to create an adventure with detail and substance. Okay, so that's good. And then what we're going to do is add the biome. So the setting and details. I suck at typing. I'm sorry. This is probably be painfully slow. The setting and details are in the Forgotten Realms fantasy world. and located in the, was that Honorox? Is that the way we spell it? I don't, it's not too important that we spell it perfectly, but I do like to give the program a hand so it doesn't have to decipher what I'm trying to say. So that must be the right spelling. And then you see all this stuff here, these are autocorrect from, from uh, Grammarly. Okay, cool. Yeah, I want to make sure that's right. It might be an O. I don't remember. Some of these formal names, places, and things are kind of difficult for a program, especially if it's something that's not as intuitive. Like, it's it's it may not know what the heck you're talking about. So that's why anything with a, a, a specific name, place, or thing, that's what you want to make sure the spelling's correct. If you have a grammar issue or you use the wrong tense or something like that, it can figure that out. It's really not gonna gonna be detrimental to your work. But if you actually give it some weird bogus name, it's not gonna know what you're talking about. So it's important to make sure that the subject or the item or the place, if it's something specific to a setting or a world or it's somebody's formal name for their NPC, that's important uh, to include that. But like I said, everything else is going to be rather um, not as essential or as important. So while he's looking that up, I want to check to make sure that I have everything here. See, like here's the word cliche. It doesn't have the accent on it. 
on or ro on or roach roach okay so i want to make sure on or roach so you were close so you had just the a swapped out which is good all right so that is that okay so what we're going to say is now that we have that we're going to say this is the adventure now i want to stipulate um a level or a CR challenge rating or a tier. Uh, do that because it will assign its own. However, if we want to shape it a little bit more and we're trying to make a one shot for our group, maybe an in-between adventure, uh, that would be in kind of important detail. So what level or challenge rating or number of players would you want to add? And that's the other thing I usually put or stipulate in the middle. It is in the template, but it's wide open. And if we tell it now, it will help with with uh, creating the content a little bit more focused on what we're wanting. If you just say do it, it's going to do it, but it may not be what you want. So just kind of keep that in mind uh, when you're building this. So uh, we'll create it for a certain level, so please, uh, we'll do, what, four to six players? So create four, four to, I'll say four to five players, because that's a little less wide. And maybe, what, CR, maybe a mid-tier or tier two. Uh, adventure or tier three i don't want tier three I, I, I don't i like tier one and tier two adventures personally i think when you get to tier three it's kind of i don't know if for a one shot i don't i don't think it works very well i think tier three should be reserved for campaigns more although i'd be argued with by the community out there that does um you know, organized play because some people need that extra. They want to go higher, you know, past 10th level or whatever. But for for newer people or people that are just getting used to playing uh, role playing games as such, going beyond tier two is a little bit much. I think a tier one would be great. Or I can specify a level. So I'm going to go with level four. I think level four is where things start getting better and interesting and they're not as boring. Uh, level three is kind of, well, everyone at that point has their um, specific uh, specialties and stuff. And that's why I always start at level three. I don't, I rarely start at level one. I think that sucks unless it's a campaign. If it's a one shot, usually I like to go between level three and four and maybe five because those are the kind of the mid levels. That's where things are just challenging enough, but it's not, you know, not challenging uh, too challenging. So it's it's one of those things that you have to consider when you're creating content. So I'll say for level four characters, and that way it kind of builds around that concept. It's not perfect. It's not going to know every little thing, but, and then everything else is going to be all just based on the template. And what I found out is if you're going to, um, if you're going to do this, you want to do it in steps and do it live. Like I sat here one night and did a whole bunch of stuff. And then what I realized is that chat GPT was starting to forget some of the stuff that I had made previously. So if you go on longer than an hour and you make a whole bunch of content without putting it somewhere, you're going to end up losing your data. So that's where you want to actually kind of compartmentalize this. So as this is right now, this is a lot and I don't want to go too far into the weeds because then it's going to lose focus. It starts forgetting what you were going to tell it or what you've already told it, and it becomes useless. So it, it's just going to piss you off is what's going to end up happening. So make sure that you make these smaller and more pointed and don't go too far off on a tangent. You do that for practice, but when you actually want to make content, it's a lot better if you kind of do it as you go and you're not going to you know, make, make, make it going to, uh, too far. Cause it's going to, it's going to break. So enough yapping. I'll go ahead and hit the go button. So we're doing a create it this adventure for levels four through five players are four create for four to five players, level four characters. So that's, that's what we're going to do. And then I'll also mention fantasy grounds just in case. So this 
is I don't think it's going to make any difference, but I'm going to put that in there. This is for the Fantasy Grounds Virtual Tabletop. I don't think that's going to make a damn difference, but I always kind of add little things like that. It's just one of my little quirks here. Okay, so there's cliche. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, go. Okay, so it's it's going through the conversation. It's looking at all these pieces, and it's going to come up with something. And so it says, sure, I'll be happy. Here's your rough draft. So the introduction is already looking decent. It says it's designed for a party four to five low four to five characters at level four. It's set in the Forgotten Realms, specifically the Honorak Desert. The adventure uses the D&D 5e rule set and does not require any additional supplements. If this adventure is used for commercial purposes, please credit OpenAI as original creator, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty cool. So it kind of knew to do that because that's one of the things I stipulated. Um, so the adventure, it, it starts, the background is that in the heart of the Honorax Desert lies the ancient forgetting, forgotten city of Irith Keep, once a prosperous city, now beneath the sands. Rumors of a power, powerful artifact, the Eye of the Sun, hidden within the city have begun to circulate. This artifact is said to have the power to control the sun itself. The party is drawn into a race against time to find the artifact before it falls into the wrong hands. So keyword time. So that's great because if it's a race for time, that's great in the respects and regards to a one shot. So if you're pressed for time and you only got like three hours or maybe four hours, that's great. You do want a, a time thing because that way you're not dilly dallying around too much. So that's great. Uh, adventure hook. So this is where I think a lot of uh, um, role playing content kind of falls. So um, this I spent a lot of time on because this is your setup. This is the stuff that you need to kind of get the game going. I don't want to bombard the game master with a ton of crap, but I do want some details in case that person is new or they're not feeling creative or they're just simply not wanting to develop more content. So I'm going to provide them with some, which they don't have to use, but at least it's there. So if you need it, if you have to lean on it, it's there's some substance there. And I think that's a huge thing that goes on in, in most adventure writing. I think a lot of the third-party publishers do a better job with this, but a lot of the, the major companies that push out content, they don't really add a whole lot to that. So let's talk about this. So the adventure background says in the heart of the Anorak desert lies the ancient forgotten city of earth or keep once a prosperous city. So we know that it's set in the city. There's an artifact there called the eye of the sun. It's hidden somewhere deep within the city. So that already implies that we need to detail an item. We need to detail the city a little bit more. So those are things that I'm going to consider if I want to continue this conversation. And then I want to develop these adventure hooks because those are what you start with. And that's probably the main focus for your first part of generating content in the, in the in context of, of developing an adventure. So one of the adventure hooks is a mysterious stranger approaches the party in a tavern offering a hefty sum of gold for the retrieval of the Eye of the Sun. So this is very ambiguous. This doesn't tell you a whole lot. That means as the game master, you're going to have to come up with this NPC if perhaps they need to engage with this individual more and they want to learn more about this person. Uh, that's where this is going to take some a little bit more work. And I think I'd want to develop an NPC, even if I don't give them a formal name, Give them some stats, give them a couple like rumor table things or something and, and call it good. You don't need to do much more than that. The party finds a map leading to the keep in the possession of a defeated enemy. So you might find this off a dead body and there is a map leading to this particular town in the desert. So this might be from all kinds of different things, but that implies that you're going to have to have some sort of regional map that's going to take the players from A to B. So this is another thing to consider that you're going to have to come up with some kind of map, whether it's basic or not, to illustrate the party going from wherever they start from to wherever the path or road to this, this keep goes. So that's already telling me that. I may not use that if I don't have the artwork, so I might change that. 
A local sage pleads with the party to find the eye of the sun before it's used for evil. So this has got more motivation. You probably want to develop the sage, and you probably want to give them a, a little bit of uh, information about this location, if he has any, and then put that in his NPC stat block and make a table so you can roll on it. And that way, if, when the players talk to him, you have some content. You can always make up your own. But it's nice to have a few different entries there in case, because not every time are you able to come up with this stuff. Um, you know, some days you're on, you can do it. Some days you can't. And if you're new, you have really had the time or experience to do it. So you need to have something. And if there's something there that might inspire a new game master or somebody that's sort of fresh on this to make their own content. And if they see an example of it, they're going to kind of be known. They're going to kind of know what to do. There's nothing there. It's just going to be this. And they're going to have to go from there. And I think that's kind of poor adventure design. So if I'm going to add all the details for these, yes, it's going to bloat the adventure a little bit more, but you're going to have substance and content. And that's one of the things that I think that most adventure writing in the last five years or so has really kind of gone downhill in that department. They're kind of just giving you this part of it and they don't give you anything else. And I think that's where it's kind of sucks. So they act like, oh, we're, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to railroad the adventure. No, it's not going to railroad the adventure. What it's going to do is give people a sense of story and that's going to help you tell the story that you want for your adventure. And it's going to give them some content that they can use if they need it. If they don't want to be railroaded and they're already experienced, they won't use it. So I don't buy that excuse. I've heard that so many times. And it's such a design piss poor uh, excuse for not providing content. So I, I don't believe in that. I think it's a really, really bad way to do business. And I, I think it's crappy. It's almost like giving you the car and no keys. You know, it's, it's really shitty. I, I, don't, I don't like it. Okay, so the adventure synopsis is going to kind of give the GM or whoever's running this kind of a base. So the party will journey through the harsh Onorok Desert, face the challenges of... of uh, Earth keeps uh, or Iron Keith's uh, ancient and trap-filled ruins. So you're going to have to make some traps, and you're going to confront a nefarious group also seeking the eye of the sun. Probably a cult, or maybe a, a band of mercenaries that have been hired to retrieve the data. So that can add to the the drama. The adventure concludes with a climatic battle to secure the artif artifact and escape the collapsing city. So that's even cooler. You, that's your race for time. You got a competition going on. You probably got a big, bad, evil guy at the end. Perfect. Uh, the adventure is divided into three main sections. The journey through the desert, the exploration of the keep, and then the final confrontation. So this kind of borrows on that five-room dungeon design, but we kind of have a three-room type thing going on. And they're not really rooms in this case. They're locations. But if you wanted a dungeon crawl, you can kind of make it a little bit more narrow, like you just start at the plaza in, in this adventure and then go from there. Or in this case, you're going from A to B. So what I would do is in that first section, I would put a couple challenges in there, like maybe a sandstorm or perhaps a really small quick battle to kind of illustrate the danger of the wilderness. So maybe a giant scorpion comes out at them or something like that. Nothing too lethal. Just enough to give them a taste of combat or a taste of the skill challenges that would be required to get from A to B. I think that really goes a long way for immersion. And this also gives you a chance to show some artwork. Like this is what the desert looks like. Here's what the city looks like from a distance. Here are some facts about the region. You know, that sort of thing. And I think that's the first part of this this quest or adventure is to get that sort of information out there and make that part of your game for more immersion. So I like the idea of having to travel from A to B. It can just be take you maybe a half an hour to, to get all that done, maybe an hour with combat. It just depends on, on, on how it's set up. But I'd make, if it's combat, I'd make it very simple. I definitely wouldn't make it a big melee. Uh, th this is not the main part of the adventure, so maybe there's some desert bandits out there that just kind of harass the party and they, they can dispatch them or, or make them run away or something like that. But you don't want to overdo this. 
this would be a kind of an introduction so they can get used to their character sheets and they can kind of get used to the interface and they can do things that uh, would be leading up to the large combat so this is a way that you can help them learn the system or the way things flow before you really go deep into the story all right so now the way i have this set up is when you have sections that are like maybe rooms or perhaps they are locations whatever i have a template for that so basically the adventure is divided in three sections there's the desert the exploration and the confrontation so the way i want these set up or the way i asked it to be set up is that you have a read aloud you have a gm section you have the encounter if any the rewards the aftermath and the conclusion and the plot hooks and the epilogue and then maybe sidebars if you have anything but that wouldn't be for each room but that would be the this is kind of like the overall outline but as far as the rooms go i want the read aloud i want the gm section the encounter the award at least that way each section has some some content it's not just a a paragraph with a description and maybe a one link so the read aloud says this it says as the party steps into the scorching desert the desert beats down relentlessly the sand beneath their feet is hot and it can see this is what i don't like is it narrates and it's not really telling the story and i kind of want this to be dialogue not me narrating what what's what's they see so i can do that in my, on my own without needing this prompt so it says as the party steps into the the sun beats down yeah so this is describing it this is not a read aloud this is just telling me about that so i want it to actually give me some dialogue so what i'm going to do is copy and paste this and i'm going to come down here and i'm going to tell it hey you know give me a story view i don't want the narration And I actually mentioned that in the context of the template. So I want a more storyteller view, not just narration. I don't want them to say it. I want them to tell it or, you know, tell a story. Don't, don't describe it because I can do that on my own. I don't need, I don't need that. I mean, it helps a little, but not that much. So I'm giving it the point or the thing that I want it to, to do. And I'm going to separate it out so it knows that this is my request and then this is the example of what I want to change. So this is the quotes. I don't like that because that's what a lot of content will do is it just gives you that and then you have to come up with everything else. I actually want something I can read aloud as a storyteller or as an NPC or whoever it is that you're engaging with. So in this case, it's just kind of a narration and I don't want it that way. So let's see what it does. It's going to take this information, hopefully rewrite it. Okay. Feel the heat. The desert seems to whisper to you as you step onto its scorching sands. The sun, a relentless overseer, casts its fiery gaze upon you. Its rays a tangible weight on your shoulders. Beneath your boots, the sand shifts each grain a tiny furnace. A wind as dry and hot as a dragon's breath whips around you, carrying you with a stinging spray of sand that dances in strange whirling patterns. Ahead, the desert unfolds into a vast expanse of golden dunes, a sea of frozen, uh, frozen in time. Yet amidst this barren landscape, a silhouette begins to take shape, rising from the desert like a specter. The half-buried form of a once great city emerges. Its ancient towers and spires, now worn and weathered by time, pierce the sky, a testament to its uh, forgotten glory. Um, Earth keep the city lost to the sands, waits in silence, its secrets hidden beneath layers of history and sand. As you advance, each step brings you closer to the city, its form becoming more defined. The wind seems to carry whispers of the past, tales of grandeur, and echoes of despair. 
The city, once a beacon of civilization, now stands as a monument to the relentless passage of time and the unforgiving nature of the desert. Yet within its silent halls and buried chambers, a promise of untold riches and ancient power lures you forward. The eye of the sun awaits, its destiny intertwined with yours in the heart of the Anorak Desert. Now that is what I want in the story. I don't want all this other crap. I don't need to be told this. This just kind of describes what they see. This actually tells a story. I don't mind both, but I certainly don't want just this top one. And this is the crap that you're getting in a lot of adventures. And they want you to make up all this stuff. Well, that's fine. It, you know, If you're experienced and you got the time to do it, great. That's awesome. But if you don't have the time to do it and it's not included, it really sucks to run this adventure because you don't have a whole lot of context and you don't have anything to go on if you need to lean on it. So this is one of the things that I believe this tool is good for is if you need some filler or you need some kind of dialogue, give it some context, give it some formatting, and then let it do its thing. And this is what you want it to do. So I have it given the, you know, it gave me this read aloud. So when I build that section in Fantasy Grounds, I'm not going to be dicking around trying to think of things. And, you know, this will already be there for me. And I kind of like the way it reads. And you can always change this. You can always ask it to redo it. You know, the, you could change some of the, the verbiage up here, like what you actually want. This is actually a little more lengthy than I thought it would be. But since it's the opening dialogue, I have no problem with that. And you don't have to have this read aloud this long or this crazy, you know, for every single area. But this is an opening area. This is where you start the adventure. And I think having that context and those descriptions are very, very uh, important for the adventure and for storytelling. So that's why I use ChatGPT is to help me come up with some creative ideas. And it kind of helps me with my burnout. I have so much burnout on this kind of stuff. And a lot of it's because of this crap that we're getting. We're getting this. As the party steps into the desert, the sun beats down relentlessly. The sand beneath their feet is hot, and a constant wind carries stinging grains of sand. In the distance, the silhouette of a once great city rises from the desert half buried in the sand. Nothing wrong with that, but that's basically addressed to the game master. And it doesn't do anything other than force me to do this stuff, the, the read aloud. So, you know, I just, I don't know. I just have a really bad um, attitude, I guess, or, or a feeling about content that's being published today. It's almost like there's no creativity. It's like they come up with the concept, the outline, they give you some cool artwork, a couple tables, some monsters. That's about it. You're not getting any content. You're not actually getting a story. And I think that's where a lot of these adventures have kind of changed over time is they kind of lost that. If you go back to some of the more classic adventures, especially those stuff by Tracy Hickman and Laura Hickman, they, they actually told a story. And that's why Dragonlance and Dark Sun and uh, what was the other, uh, you know, any of the earlier stuff, um, even like, uh, you know, some of the really early stuff. They were actually created by authors, people who write books. You can tell the difference between someone who's a casual role player and someone who writes stories. And I think that's part of the issue is that people that are designing adventures, it's almost like they've never read before. It's really crazy. I mean, I could be wrong, but, you know, it just feels like the content that's being creative is not very um, immersed or not very involved it's like you and you have eight people working on one project they all have their little piece that they're working on it kind of loses the cohesiveness and there isn't much oversight on how all this stuff is coming together and if there is they're buying off on it and saying yeah that's great when it's really not so i don't know what the format is or how they do this in a professional game design but they ain't doing this. I'll tell you that right now. I rarely see this. I get this from Kobold Press. I get this from Frog God Games. And I get this from companies that actually care. And a lot of the people that are doing this are people who have been in the industry and they've actually written content 
or they're published authors, or they did really well in English when they were taking English classes in college or high school. So you can tell the difference between that. And I am not any of those things. So I, I don't really have that talent. So having a tool like ChatGPT is like a godsend for me because that really spurns me to, I'm more or less the curator and the guy throwing the stuff together. I wouldn't say I'm the, the, the author, but I am saying that I have enough experience with the content and with the platform to recognize when you got garbage versus cool stuff. So I, I kind of like the way that ChatGPT organizes your thoughts. It helps you come up with ideas. If you got writer's block or you suck at coming up with creative content, this is a good tool for that. And I want to emphasize tool. So no, you don't use this for everything, but yes, you use it as one of your main tools. So that's, that's I want to get that across. So going back, I do not want to go too far into this without getting some of this content over to Fantasy Grounds. So this is a mistake that I made early on where you're just making a bunch of crap and then you try to go back and put that in Fantasy Grounds. It's difficult because you're copying and pasting and scrolling and all kinds of crap. So what you want to do is I'm not going to go any further with the generation stuff. I'm going to go back and focus on just this stuff and at least get it copied and pasted into Fantasy Grounds. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy what it's generated so far. And occasionally you have to go back and re-put this into Fantasy Grounds, ask it another thing to make or to create. And that way it remembers what the context of your information is. If without that context, it starts forgetting, it starts changing the names of peoples and places and things, and it's just going to piss you off. It'll lose focus. It just it does a lot of weird stuff. So that's why I'm going to suggest that you kind of do this as you go. So what I've got here is a sample create campaign thing. So I'm going to create a campaign. I don't really have a name, but I'm just going to call it Desert Biome for right now because that's what we started at. And then um, work. So this is my work folder. This is not a campaign that I'm going to run in Fantasy Grounds. This is where I'm building it. Once I'm done building it, then I'll export it as a module, which makes it much easier. Because when you're building as you're playing, it gets very confusing. It gets convoluted, a lot of loss of focus, and you start kind of getting lost, and, and it never happens. If you build this content outside of your campaign and import it as a module to supplement what you're doing, it's a much cleaner way to do it. It's more focused, and you're not going to mess with your campaign too much, and you're not going to break your immersion by trying to spend hours of fixing things and rewriting them when you can actually just do a lot of that outside of the outside of the game and, and add it as you go to your work campaign instead of your actual campaign. So that's something you're going to come across eventually. There's nothing wrong with building as you go. It's just a lot more convoluted and confusing and time consuming. So you know, it's one of those things where once you start, you got to kind of finish it before you move on. Otherwise, it's useless to you. So I'm going to go. I got the D&D 5e rule set. I just loaded the font uh, extension. That's the only thing I need. I don't need anything else. And I have it on the cloud because I don't want to share it right now or have anyone join. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. So it's on my local computer. I'm not using this in or online or through the cloud. I'm just using this at home locally. So I kind of wanted to get you guys uh, you know, some perspective on, on how I'm doing this. So I went through a bunch of chat GPT stuff. Hopefully it wasn't boring and it was me ranting about the quality of the uh, content that we're getting from a lot of the major publishers. I'm not pointing fingers, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. And there, there are some others, too, that are out there for other rule sets that kind of do the same thing. What I'm really looking for, though, is that content, the substance, the story, the, the stuff that goes with it, like the tokens and the pictures and all that stuff. So here I got this fresh campaign. I don't need to do much, but I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Since I'm not putting in any sort of NPCs or tables or anything rule set wise, like with the rules, I could build this in core RPG. I don't have to build it in Fantasy Grounds that are in a specific rule set. That way I can port it to Pathfinder. I could port it to any fantasy, you know, Savage Worlds a lot easier than if I start in 5e. 
I'm going to be kind of stuck with that. And I don't mind that for this situation. But if you're going to make a commercial product that is going to go to several different rule sets, I suggest you build the story and all of that sort of thing in the core RPG. Because then later you can always copy and paste or, or turn that into other rule sets. And then at that point, you'll develop the NPCs, the items, the monsters, players, all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to do a large commercial product and you want to make it for every rule set, build it in the core RPG. That way you're not stuck and you have to go back. So in this case, I'm only building it for 5e. I'm not trying to sell it or do anything commercial. But that's just a, a trap that a lot of us get into when we don't understand how this stuff works. Um, I could load the core rules or the SRD, but I don't need them right now. I just need the, the story. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll leave the show on load. I usually turn that off, but I'll leave that on because next time I might want to load them. So I go to next and then finish. And now I'm just going to go straight over to the story entry. So I want to go to campaign, which is where that's the story entries are stored. Go to story. And I'm just going to start a new group. So I don't have a title yet, so I'll just leave it as group one. But that's important to establish this kind of in the beginning. That way you have a naming convention throughout all the data that you put in the Fantasy Grounds. So this is technically something I might just put Desert Adventure or something like that instead of group one. Because that'll be easier to edit than having everything say group one, group two. So Desert Adventure, you know, it's a little bit more focused. And then I'm going to create a story item, which is just a blank template here. I'm going to number it 00.00. .00. There's a reason for that. So if you're going to do chapters or sections, you want to name them accordingly. And then I'm going to hit Control V. And that puts the text in that I copied from ChatGPT. So another thing that helps is if you know the shortcuts and the things for formatting in Fantasy Grounds. So I'm going to do is right click, go to clean up text, which is going to kind of sandwich everything together without all the extra spaces, because this is what you get from PDFs, websites, third party. You can also do that in the uh, Notepad++ ahead of time. So when you paste the content in there, you don't have to do these extra steps. But I, I kind of like that. So it's kind of smushed everything together. Still keeps some of the formatting, but you don't have all these double spaces. And now what you could do is just kind of use this as a starting point to build your content. So I'm going to go back to that one section here that shows this, this GM thing when we were talking about part two. So I'm going to go ahead and put, let's just put... Um, I don't know, intro, and then we'll put a better title later, but we don't want to go too far without that title because it'll get harder to fix these. But I'm going to add another section, and this is going to be just that one part that I was complaining about for the beginning and that story piece that I had in there. So I'm going to go back to ChatGPT, and I'm going to grab the fix or the actual thing that I wanted it to fix. So... Here's the read aloud part, and that's nothing wrong with that, but it, it's not a read aloud. It's, it was narration. So what I want to do, oh, and then I can go to the Internet, and I'll show you this later, but I can do the honor thing here, and we can draw upon this information as needed in case. So when we are going to go through and create some lore, we have some sort of idea of what the traditional stuff was. We don't have to use any of it, but we can use it for background information and for history and that sort of thing. So this will be something I'll show you shortly with the plugin. So now we want to copy and paste this read aloud section because that's going to be one of our sections in the adventure. So I'll go ahead and copy this in. And I'll label this 02 dot, I believe it was 10. And that way we know this this is part of that. And then go back here to the, yep. And now I'm going to grab this stuff, which is the actual read aloud. That other stuff, I don't know what that was, but it was not what I wanted. So I am going to keep both of those because I'm going to come back, reformat it, uh, rearrange it. I might break this down into 
a GM section. So this would be something the Game Master would read before to kind of give them an idea of what this stuff is going to be about. And I'll turn these into dialogue. So if you actually take the text, highlight it, hit Control-3, I believe it is, yeah, that turns it into a dialogue box. So there's three paragraphs. And then if you want it to be a speaker or a specific person saying this, you can add that in. So if I click on this now, this is just going to put this in the chat as a basic uh, formatted text. But if I want it to actually be like I, the GM, is saying this, then I need to put in a speaker. So you do that by hitting Control Tab. And then I'm just going to put GM. And I'll do the same thing with the rest of these. So Control Tab inside of that, inside of the cell, or inside of this text block. So Control Tab. And then I'm going to type in GM. And that's basically one of the shortcuts you'll have to learn. So highlighting this text was Control 3 to make the bubble and to insert a, a name or a speaker. Once you click inside there near the beginning of your paragraph, you hit Control Tab and then put in your name, NPC, whoever you want. Now when you do this, it actually will give you this information in more of a story kind of a dialogue box and the nice thing about this is if you have an npc and they want to speak all you have to do is select a language if it is in a different language let's say elvish for instance and when you actually send that to the chat it will put it in elvish so you have to have an assigned speaker in order to take advantage of this Otherwise, if it's just regular text, it doesn't do that. And it will not auto do this. So this is a manual. Some people have asked, well, can you set the speaker here as the elf? No, you have to actually manually select it from the chat area and then hit this button to send the text over and we'll put this in Elvish. So that's how you do it. It's no way to give it a symbol. It'd be nice if you could give it a little, a little code like brackets and say Elvish or something like that, but it doesn't work that way. So this is just a, a suggestion. You can do this if you want, but this is what, what I would expect to see. And then for this read aloud, I might put that in bold, you know, for, for formatting. And then this part up here, what I might do is instead of saying read aloud, I'll just put, um, you know, I'll give it a title. So maybe I will say uh, intro dialogue and then gm notes or something like that and then i will take these quotes off here i don't need that because that's not going to be dialogue so this is just the dm notes i'm going to hit control b to make this bold and up here this intro dialogue i'm going to make it a, a red kind of heading so i'm going to hit control z Control two, so there's your your dialogue, and this is what it's what it's going to look like. So I kept that kind of that bogus um, description, and then this is kind of like describing the situation, and then these things down here are the actual dialogue. So that's really cool. I like that how that worked out. So th this is kind of the what I'd prefer to see, and not just this one liner here. That was literally let's see one to like three sentences. I mean, what good is that? That's that's really not, I don't know. Anyways, I can spend all day bitching about and moaning about that, but that that's really what we're getting with a lot of the content that's out now. All right, so now that we have that, I've kind of went ahead of myself. I wanted to go back to the adventure hooks because that's more part of the beginning. So I kind of going off course, getting distracted, getting excited, you got to kind of rein that in. And then that's one of the things about discipline in writing these adventures is you got to kind of be careful not to go too far off your, your target. So let's talk about these adventure hooks. So I'm going to hit control copy and I'm going to make another story entry. And this is 1.10. So let's put this back in story entry. It's nice to have this numbering because 
it keeps it more organized and you're you're less likely to get confused what goes when and that sort of thing and then this is going to be the adventure hooks and then i'll just call this adventure hooks just for the sake of it so i'm going to do a little bit more with these adventure hooks because i think i want a little bit more context for these particular entries because what you're getting from a lot of adventures is only that and I think that's okay if you want to, you know, be minimalistic about your design. But I want to give this more information. So I want to take this first part of this hook. And I'm going to copy and paste that, put it back into ChatGPT. And I want it to give me some kind of context of the mysterious stranger. I want a little bit more details on this because that is not quite enough for me, especially if I was new, I'd be really pissed off. I wouldn't know what what the heck is going on or, or how to even, you know, if you don't know all the story, it's re unless you read through the entire thing, there's really no way to, to give it context. So that's what I'm gonna do is focus on, on these three adventure hooks. So I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT and I'm going to ask it to fix that. So I want to hit Control V. I'm referencing what what I want to fix, and that's the adventure hook. So I want to say for the first adventure hook, please detail the mysterious stranger within the context of the the adventure and give some details within yeah, I, I think that's good enough you get too wordy it's going to get confused so detail mysterious stranger and that's the nice thing about spell check is I can just come through here. And... Okay, so this is kind of um, what I want it to, to work on. That's what I'm telling it. So let's fix this. Let's. I'm interested to see what it's going to come up with. This is probably the fun part is just to see what a mysterious stranger. So for the first adventure hook, please detail the mysterious stranger more and within the context of the adventure so far. And just leave it that way. Let's see what it does. So it's going to analyze what I said. Hopefully it's looking back at the previous stuff. And here we go. So here's the adventure hook. As the party settles into the bustling atmosphere of a local tavern, a figure cloaked in, in mystery approaches. The, the stranger is tall, gaunt man, his face obscured by a hood. His clothes, though simple, bear the subtle signs of distant travels and a life of intrigue. His voice, when he speaks, carries an accent that none can place, hinting at far-off lands and untold stories. He introduces himself as Erevan, a scholar of ancient civilizations. His eyes, a striking shade of amber, hold a glint of urgency as he speaks of the eye of the sun. So it would be interesting if we said that his eyes, the amber color that they are, almost remind you of the sun, or two twin suns. An artifact of immense power lost within the ruins of, of Earth Keep. Erevin explains that he has been tracking the artifact for years, but his age and the harsh conditions of the Anorak Desert have kept him from retrieving it himself. So this gives an excuse why he isn't he doing it, you know. Uh, he offers the hefty uh, he offers the party a hefty sum of gold, enough to tempt even the most cautious of adventurers. But more than gold, it's a promise of adventure, the thrill of unearthing a piece of history, and the potential power of the artifact that stirs the spirit of the party. Erevin provides them with a warm map, a worn map. Its edges frayed and its surfaces marked with cryptic symbols, the first clue on their journey to the heart of the Anorak Desert. So that's not bad. I mean, that's a really good adventure hook. The only thing I'm missing here is the dialogue, so I'm going to ask it to do that. That's kind of what I did before. So I like all this, 
but I wanted to add some dialogue. And I also want to add some information that he might know in case the party asks questions. Because one of them's already answered. Like, you know, some people say, well, why the hell aren't you out there looking for it? Why are we having to do it? And then it's going to say, well, how much gold does he actually going to offer them? Is it going to be a range or is it a set price? You know, those sort of things. These are the things that make the adventure more complete, more substance and less, you know, hearsay. And it also gives the story more of a chance to build. And you're also telling the story and not just narrating. it. So that's kind of what I want to do with this. So this information is good. I don't, I don't mind this. But now, as a game master, I'd have to paraphrase all this and make up my own dialogue, which I'll do anyways if I'm experienced or I have the time for it or I'm in the mood to do that. If I'm not in the mood, I need something, some kind of substance. Or if I don't have the experience, I need something to keep the story going. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create the dialogue like we've done up here. So please create the actual story dialogue for the mysterious stranger. And I don't like the idea that they said Erevin because I want him to remain that way until the party asks what his name is. And that's kind of a, you know, if you have a stranger, you want it to remain a stranger unless the party insists that they know his name. So that also tells you how involved or how engaged they are with the adventure and the story. Do they care about this guy? Do they just assume that he's just a quest giver? Or does he have relevance in this story? So that's kind of what, what I'm looking for here. So please create the actual story dialogue for the mysterious stranger. Okay, that's one. That's one thing I want from this. And remember, this is only one plot hook. But I want it to have substance. I don't want just a hearsay thing. And then I'm going to ask it to, to please designate or um, give the actual gold reward amount. So I want to know how much is he going to give, not just, oh, a certain amount. I mean, that DM can decide if they want to change that. But I, I want to give it just a, because he did say generous, so it's going to be quite a bit. Uh, so shift, enter to go to the next line. There was something else I wanted out of this too. So he's going to do, oh, the map. Yeah, well, uh, the map kind of bothers me because I don't have the artwork yet. And that's kind of sucks. So I just know that I need a map because it's going to be in the second hook. And it's also going to come up again. So that map is going to be important throughout at least the first parts of the adventure. So we're going to have to get a map. Uh, so please designate or give this as, uh, the actual goal awards. Let's see. He does this. Oh, I know what I wanted. Please generate a rollable list of... Rumors for the tavern that are semi, I don't want them to be exact, but I want them to be semi related to the context of the adventure. So I don't want them too pointed because sometimes it tells you exactly what, what's going on. I don't want that. I want them to be, let's see, that are subtle. I want the rumors to be more subtle. I don't like them to say straight out, oh, there's this pyramid in the desert and there's this artifact out there. I mean, that's kind of what you get in a lot of adventures. And I don't I don't need that either. That's kind of like Captain Obvious. You know, it's like, oh, okay, that's really obvious. And it also gives away half the damn mystery of the adventure. So I want to say, please, okay, so I gave it the, you know, the command or the request for it, but I got to give it a, you know, some sort of formatting if this is going to be a table. So this is where uh, having your prompts set up ahead of time really helps. So this is a rollable list table. Okay, so what this is is just a list of with numbers and a pipe separator and then the content after it. And I gave it an example, and I'm telling it, hey, 
you know, this generate a list in the format below, a two digit result separated by a, a pipe symbol only. So I want to say pipe symbol. No formatted tables, because if you mention tables anywhere in this, it's going to create a formatted table. I don't want that. If I was creating a PDF, that would be fine. I'm not. Uh, so the formatting text, row, and column should be preserved for consistency and for parsing the data into the Fantasy Grounds table import tool. So I'm telling it, hey, damn it, I want it in this format and nothing else. We'll see what if it if it listens. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It, it really depends on how you word it and the context around the request. So that this is when you're going to learn uh, the hard way or the tough way with ChatGPT. It's not always accurate. It's going to give you some bogus information. So this is uh, what I'm going to do. Let's see what it does. I didn't give it any specific results so that or a number range. I probably should have. So here's the dialogue. Perfect. It's giving me a really neat kind of story type thing with this dialogue. Uh, wow, this is really cool. So this is going to give me, uh, oh, he's given 500 gold. That's pretty generous. Uh, so yeah, the reward is 500. So we can make a parcel for that. And then a rollable list of tavern rumors. So this is where this prompting helps. Oh, great. He's given me a lot of different, or chat GPT is giving me like 12 different Wow, that's really neat. Wow, it's going crazy. It's going up to 20. You know, I don't mind more. I don't think, I think that's a little excessive, but we're using a 20 sided die. I don't want 100. Please, not 100. <laughs> I should have specified the maximum. Oh, shit. It is actually going beyond that. <laughs> oh, crap. Let's see what it does. Is it going to keep going? Yeah, so I'm going to stop this generation. I like what it did. But if you ever see something like that, or sometimes it gets stuck in a loop or it just keeps going and going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to edit what I asked it to do. And I'm only going to say uh, only generate eight rumors. And that's something that you got to watch out for. So that thing was going for it. I mean, I don't know when it was going to stop, but that's a hell of a lot of stuff. That's already going beyond. I mean, I could take some of this, but I'm, I'm just going to have it redo it. So save and res, uh, resubmit. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that was going way beyond what I thought it was going to do. Okay, so it's going to kind of repeat what it was doing before. It says, greetings, travelers. Erevan begins his voice in a low, barely audible over the tavern's den. I've heard tales of your exploits, and I believe you may be the ones I've been searching for. So you can see it's kind of really got more of the dialogue in there. And here are the eight results. And here's, oh, 5,000 gold. It changed it this time. Wow. Was 500. <laughs> it's gone up. Okay, so here's the results. And all of this can be dialogue if you want. So this is a rollable list of rumors. So I want to take all of this stuff here and put that into our our content that we were working on in that section for the plot hook. So here's the dialogue. I'm going to go back into Fantasy Grounds. So this is the adventure hook. So what I'm thinking about is each hook is going to have its own page. And then I'm going to link each one of those story entries into here. And then I'm going to make a rollable table here. So what I want to do is create another story entry. But this one will be plot hook A, I guess. So 0, 1 dot. See, we don't want 1, 0. So I'll just do 1, 0, A. Something like that. So this will be A. So this is the the dialogue. So we can get rid of that number because we already know it's A. We'll just say um, Erevan, Erevan's dialogue. And we will say um, plot hook or adventure hook. Is that what we called it? Yeah, adventure hook. A. 
we don't have to have Erevan's dialogue. We already know there's dialogue there. And this is going to be my header, I guess, for this. And then this would be where Erevan's dialogue would go. I'll say Erevan's potential, because I don't want to say that you have to use this. Eh, I'll just say dialogue. They can decide if they want to use it or not. It's on them. You don't have to use this, but it's there if you don't have it. And that's kind of where I think our adventures need to be a little bit cleaner in that regard. So I'm going to right click and clean up the text. And then the goal for the reward is here, which is going to be a parcel. And then we're going to have a rollable rumor table, but it's not going to be here. I'm going to actually take this. And I'm going to copy and paste it somewhere else. So this will be a table instead of just this dialogue. So I'm going to hit Control Copy. I'm going to go to Tables. And again, I'm going to make a, a group. And this time, the group is going to be just the same as I've been using before. Uh, so we'll just call it uh, Desert Adventure for now. And you're going to do all this formatting and um, organizing before we link everything together. Because if you do that before, and then you have to go back and fix it, you have to also go back and fix everything else. So don't you do all the linking at the end. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot more time on this. So here's Desert Adventure. And I use the Import tool. I'm going to hit Control V, which is the paste. And then this is the header. Oops, I don't want to do that. So this is all the, the rumor tables. I'm going to change this to delimited, change it to pipe, column header in the first row, table ranges in the first row. It's delimited by a pipe symbol, which is going to separate the roles from the content. I don't use commas or semicolons because quite often if these are sentences or paragraphs or whatever, it's going to give a new column or a row to it. I don't want that. And then I'm going to call this the tavern rumor table. We might even give that, that we might call it the desert eagle or something, the tavern. But for right now, I just want to give it that name. So when I do that, when it's all formatted correctly, and you don't have weird punctuation and all kinds of stuff, you hit import, it should, yeah, so it did it exactly what I wanted. So there's the table. There's the role result. These are dialogue, so I'll leave that as chat because it's not creating anything but other than, than just an output to chat, and I don't have to hide it. So once I, once I have this table, I'll roll on it and just kind of check to see if it works. Result is you heard a tale about a city swallowed by the desert. They say it's still there waiting to be found. So let's see what else it does. Ah, it rolled the same thing. One, it says they say the desert's just not sand and heat. There's magic there, old and powerful. So that's pretty cool. So you have like this adventure rumor table thing, which is going to help you in case they linger, the, the party members linger around in, in an actual, uh, at, you know, in the tavern. If they spend too much time there, you know, you're going to have to have something. So the adventure hooks are going to be mentioned here in these three sections. So let me tidy that up and then they can choose or roll uh you know if they want to do any of those plot hooks or if we want to make a, a this tavern table into a tavern where we're going to actually detail the tavern we could do that so you can say choose or roll you know if they're if this would be for the tavern so this would go with the um I don't want that there. So this would go with the dialogue that I have. Um, so if I wanted to, the adventure hook, this would go with this. So I want to um, put a rumor table. This is a tavern rumor table. And then if you were going to, you would link this to there. But I'm not going to do any linking right now. 
So just because I don't want to have to go back and fix it. But I'll leave that placeholder. And then this stuff here, I don't really need this um, this dialog, but I might leave the text in case the, the uh, GM just wants to read it and pick one of these. So I, I will put roll or choose. And that way the GM can look at these and say, okay, I want these. So then that that rollable list is going to be available for the GM if he wants to make it more random or the players can pick something. So that's why I offer tables sometimes is that if you're going to run this adventure more than once as the game master, that's going to make it more interesting because it's going to be a little different. You know, you're not going to always have the same thing. And depending on the context of the party and how much time you have, you know, you might look at a couple of these different rumors. So it just depends. So the gold reward is a 500 or 5,000 gold piece uh, to retrieve the eye of the sun. So that is a parcel. And what we would do is create a parcel, or we will create a parcel, and then we'll put a, a category, and we're going to do this. We're going to um, take this. We're going to rename it to... Let's go with uh, Desert Adventure. And this is where if you go too far, you're going to start having to backtrack a lot. So if you're going to do this, do all this naming and all the files and, and do all that ahead of time. If you don't, it's going to be hard. You have to go back and fix everything before you link everything. So I would try to do it as you go. I'm not doing a lot of things the right way because I want to show the tool and how you can incorporate it. But honestly, I would be doing, working on just the tables and working on just the NPCs and working, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm not all over the place, but I'm doing this just for the benefit of the viewer so we can we can look at that. But this is not a very organized approach. So here's the, the parcel. So we can put 500 gold in here or 5,000, I keep trying to. And then we could put the map in here um, if, if he's going to supply a map. But in this case, no. We're going to have to develop the map. That's something that we ha is on our to-do list. So we want to put Erevin's um, reward. So he's going to give them this reward when they come back. However, the party might complain and say, hey, we want something up front. So he might give them 1,000 up front and then 5,000 later or 4,000 later. You might say, okay, go buy your equipment, whatever. Maybe you have to buy camels or something like that. But th th that's negotiable. But I just gave them the parcel. So this way, when they need it, it's there. Attend our other classes. See everything done in the right order. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, exactly. It, th this is the thing is like when you are showing something, if I only do just the tables and such, that might be great, but it doesn't appeal to but a very niche population thing uh, when I'm doing a live stream. But when I'm doing a class, we actually try to show you the, the correct format and the correct way to do this. Because you're if you get all scrambled apart like this, it's going to take you forever. And if you have every all the time in the world, you know, who cares? But if you want to get work done and you want to be more efficient, you definitely, you definitely want to tr create a way to do it without jumping around. And that's kind of what we're getting at here. So this is just a way to to kind of make content. I just kind of want to show you the capabilities of this particular program and of the ChatGPT tool. Actually, I want that to be that. Okay, so we made a table using that tool, and it gave us the correct format so that it's easier to bring that table in without having to hand type it all in. So now let's do an NPC, again, jumping out of order but I want to show you how the tool works. So I want to make Erevin, okay? I want to make the NPC. I don't want to just have a, a name. So in case you get in a fight with him or he maybe he shows up later and rescues you or whatever. So I want to make an NPC for Erevin. So what I'm going to do is go to my handy dandy templates that I've made. And up here on the top, I have a, a prompt example for NPCs. And this is the exact format that I want to use so I don't have to dink around too much with importing an NPC. 
So what I'm going to say is please create Aravin. But I want to first give it a command. That's more of a detail. So I want to say create an NPC or a D and D. You want to format this correctly. A D and D. Let's say create a D and D NPC for for Aravan. Is that, did I spell his name right? Aravan. Yeah. So create a create and create a D and D five E NPC stat block. For Aravan above. What should we make Aravan though? Since he's kind of an important NPC, I want to give him a little bit of oomph. I don't want him just to be an NPC with nothing. Should we give him a class? Maybe. Well, he is a sage, I think. It said he, or maybe he's an explorer more. It says sage, but we already have a sage. So let's say that he's a, a traveler and he hires people. So he's kind of like a scout or maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, um, Aravin is one of the main NPCs in the beginning of the story. And if you want to use him again, it'd be nice to have a little bit more stats. Or in case someone decides they want to kick his butt because they're not he's not giving up the gold or something like that, I want to have the stat block. I don't want to just have a name or a generic person. I actually want him to have a little bit of oomph. So should we make him like a CR3 um, NPC? I don't really care if he's a spellcaster or not. I just want him to have some weapons and you know some armor. And maybe a couple of things and maybe his backstory, you know, something like that. So anybody got any clues what they might want? And this is kind of important. So uh, you create a D&D &D NPC stat block for Arav and above. Okay, CR 4 or 5. Okay, I'll go with the four, 5. CR 5, challenge rating 5, um, armed with... A scimitar, dagger, and a longbow. Let's see. Simiatar. Simitar. And a longbow. Here's dagger. Create a... Okay, yep, yep. A, okay, make him a CR5 level NPC armed with a scimitar, a dagger, and a longbow um, wearing leather armor. Okay, so that is essentially all the details I'm giving it. Oh, also include a short background at the end. So I want to have a little bit of a little bit of a dialogue uh, for that. So, okay, so CR5 level NPC. All right, so I'm going to ask it to use the template. Please, please generate based on the template below. And now I'm going to hit Shift. Hit Control V is in Victor, and this is the formatting that I'm asking it to do, and it looks good. So let's see what happens. So this is the template, and this is something I've already come up with. It's something I've worked on quite hard and to figure out, and to kind of get to know, get very familiar and comfortable with how the NPC stat block should look text-wise because if you throw anything in there, it's not going to give you the results that you want necessarily, and it would be harder to use the import tool. So that's why I have that this sort of formatting. And this is on our website, by the way. If you join our Fantasy Grounds Academy website, I put all this in an article on our blogs under the uh, FGA Times. So a lot of these 
these templates and the you know things I'm using are already on the website. But I'll include the link at the end of the video. Or I'll put the links in the what the hell is that? What's what is that in the way? Eh, I don't want this. There we go. Okay. So it's thinking. And here's the stat block. So he's neutral good. They gave him his leather. Hit points look good. He's got his stats. Looks like he's more of a wisdom, intelligence kind of guy. A little bit of dex. So that kind of makes sense. He knows common, elvish, and draconic. That's interesting. He's scholarly. He spent years studying ancient civilization. So he should have the proper... Um, yeah, he's got history, insight, perception, arcana. Okay, that makes sense. And here's his background. And here's his weapons. And he can make two attacks. So that's what I wanted. I wanted something kind of basic. I didn't necessarily say he's a ranger or anything like that. I just want to have some weapons and a little bit of a backstory and some kind of, you know, stats and such. So now when I go to Fantasy Grounds, I can essentially go to the NPCs. Again, I'm going to create my own group, so we'll just call this Desert Adventure. And you kind of probably want to do this before you start anything else. That way you're not stopping in the middle of doing this and have to do this every time. So I'd go to every single data set that I intend to use and, and do it there first. That way I don't have to keep stopping and making it. I'll do all that in the beginning. So now I'm going to take up the bring up the parsing tool. So this is important. So... When you're using this import, that text that I'm bringing in has to be right. So I'm going to hit Control V. The background information does not belong here. It actually goes over here to the right. So I'm going to copy and paste that over there because this will mess up the parsing. And I'll delete that because I don't, I don't need that. If you right click, you can clean up the text, get rid of the extra spaces. And then Erevin the Scholar is his name. So I'll hit Control Copy. And I'll use that up here as a header. Oops. What the hell? Okay, so copy. Yeah, the it yeah, please, hi, please, when you're done, publish the video. Yeah, we're gonna publish the video. Don't don't worry about that. Uh it'll be up on YouTube shortly, because I I'm gonna actually get going soon. I'm kind of spending too much time, but I wanted to make sure that guys know how to use this uh, let's see so control V and this is going to be bold so if I'm highlighting hitting control 2 and then I'm going to get rid of that space in there and put uh, put make this bold yeah no problem that's I do have other videos already so if you know even if I don't do it right away there's a bunch of other stuff already up that's very similar so here's B and there we go so there's that. Okay, so now I'm going to hit import. But before I do, I want to mention the kind of crap that you want to look for when it comes to using the import tool. So medium humanoid, comma, neutral good. So that's what you want to see. I see the medium, comma, humanoid, comma, neutral good. That's not right. Uh, for armor class, I see AC 13. That's not going to work. Hit points, HP, and then they give you just the hit points and not the range. In speed, they'll put 30 feet. They'll spell the word feet, and that's not going to work. Uh, the stats need to be in this format. So the top row here is the actual stat. The bottom row are the results, and they're separated by a space. So if you see it in any other format, it's probably not going to work. It has to be exactly like this, or it's going to throw off the parsing. All this stuff looks right, looks good, looks good. You kind of get used to this after a while of looking at these to, to see what's wrong or what's broken. So traits, after each trait, there needs to be a period, not a hyphen, not a comma, not a semicolon, not a colon, because that's going to throw off the parsing tool. Same thing with actions, multi-attack, period, scimitar, period. Dagger, period. You, that needs to be there. If you don't, it'll throw off the, the whole thing. That's why these things break. And quite often, if you're copying and pasting from a website or a PDF, the format is not correct. I did post that 
on the website as a separate article about how to parse these NPCs into Fantasy Grounds. There's actually two formats for the NPC stat blocks, and that is this horizontal way, and then there's a vertical way that is used by D&D Beyond. Both of those will parse correctly. But if you have some weird extraneous thing or something you're building by hand, it needs to be gone through before you paste it in here because it's not going to work. And you're going to have to end up hand typing everything anyways. So let's see if it breaks. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import. And yeah, it looks good. So human, humanoid, neutral good. You got all this stuff that looks right. Here's all the attacks. That looks right. You can kind of tell because when it's broken, the numbers won't be in there right. It'll be missing a lot of these fields, and it won't set up these actions and traits properly. That's usually what breaks. And then on the other tab, if you're using the new import tool, you get this really beautiful looking um, back thing here. Yeah, you can watch my video of the NPC parser. Yeah, so yeah, um, Garner or, or Chaotic Good Gaming has done one too. And that's really important because this is where that thing kind of pisses you off and it breaks down. So you really got to see how this stuff is formatted. That's kind of why I did it in text so that people can copy and paste the, 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 the information so they can kind of see what the format is. Otherwise, when you paste it in there, you're not going to know what to look for. And I know that you mentioned that in your in your video, but I actually have the text too, which is important because you got to have a, a a starting kind of a starting point, especially for Chat GPT. So this multi attack scimitar dagger longbow, so that's great. Everything's there, including this. Now, a, if I wanted to, I could put a rumor table on here. I can link that. I can also put the link for that parcel, the, the treasure, that he is going to give the party. That makes it convenient so I don't have to dig through the story looking for that. That's important because if he's going to offer that, it's nice to have, like, let's put a rumor table on here on stuff he knows about the city or about the desert or whatever. And then we could put the parcel link here which is a direct link to the treasure that he's going to give the party. So when you have his character sheet up or when his NPC sheet here and you want to, you know, use him and then at the, on the back sheet, you would have all that information. And this little gap up here, I'm going to actually use for his photo when we are going to parse that into the mid journey app. So we're going to do that and then we'll call it a day. So that's, this is Erevin right? And this information here, I can actually use part of this as my my uh, description of who he is and what he looks like. So now I'm going to kind of switch gears and we're going to use a tool to generate the token and the information to present to the party like a picture and, and that sort of thing. So let's do that. So now that we have the NPC stat block, I want the artwork. So normally I would do the artwork and the tokens first, but we're developing the story and we're going to be doing that throughout this adventure. And the only way to know all that is to do that first and then go and build all the art assets. We don't necessarily know what we need until we need it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But normally though, I'd have all the artwork, the tokens, the maps, everything done. So the map should have been something that was already done or at least started. So that's where I'm going to have problems when I'm trying to present this story because I don't have all that stuff together. So I definitely need a map. So I'm going to generate a map also in chat GPT and then use it in, use the, uh, the terminology or the words to help formulate the prompt to use in mid journey. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to, the program, which is in this case, this is chat GPT. I'm going to switch gears. So I'm going to go with this mid journey app. So this is my kind of my image generation thread. And what I'm going to do is ask it to create this, this NPC, the picture of him. So what I want to do is uh, first, I'm going to tell um, chat GPT that I want to make a prompt for the mid journey app. And this has a plugin called photorealistic, which is a third party plugin 
that goes to this particular application, but you have to have the paid version of 4.0 and you have to sign up for the beta test on the plugins. And mind you, these plugins are quirky. Like sometimes they'll just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. So you got to be careful when you use these. But I'm going to go ahead and ask it. I'm going to say um, create a prompt for the mid journey. Because that's what tells it to use that plugin. So create a prompt for the mid journey um, AI app. Okay, so that's just an opening statement. That tells ChatGPT, I want to use this photorealistic plugin, or at least it gives it direction um, for this particular prompt. And now I'm going to paste in some of that data that I had from the other part of this. So actually, I don't need that. I'm just going to go with, um, I'm going to do my own thing. So what I want to do is put the topic is a tall and dark. See, the topic is a tall and dark man wearing. Because we're not going to see much of his face, right? We just know that he's kind of mysterious. So that's why I didn't give a whole lot of description. Because a lot of that's going to be hidden underneath the cloak. So when you're doing these kind of prompts with any sort of AI generative tool with artwork, if you're not going to see the face, don't describe it because that's just going to throw it off. And it will it'll fill in the blanks if like a little bit of the face is sticking out. You don't have to. We can say he has a big nose. We can say that. So the topic is a tall and dark man with a large nose or with a large hawking nose. We'll say with a large with a large, I'll just say with a large nose. We don't need to put that hawking in there. Comma, uh, wearing a brown cloak and leather armor under the cloak. And we'll say dusty. Wearing a brown, dusty cloak. I don't know if that will help the prompt, but gives you the idea that it's kind of old and soiled. And you can watch. Yeah. Okay. So we got a cloak, and then I'm going to put um, comma. Let's see. We want the the you know kind of the background to look like a tavern or an inn. Uh, so what we can do is tell this what we want it. To under a cloak under the cloak okay i'll say this all right so now what we're going to do is kind of okay so we give it the subject now and we told it kind of describe the subject a little bit uh, we're going to tell it that we kind of want a D&D &D kind of feel to it. So this will kind of help direct it uh, as to the type of art that it's going to apply to it. So I'm going to put um, oh, D&D &D fantasy art. I'm going to put super detailed because I want it to look more like a, you know, more like a picture and less like a cartoon. And then... I'm going to ask it to do the tenebrous um, feel, which is an art term for kind of dark, obscure. So tenebrous mood and with a fantasy tavern background. Instead of fantasy tavern, I'll say a fantasy kind of, uh, how would I say, would it be Arabic or... No, let's put a uh, Persian. Let's call it a Persian. I don't know what else to call it, but I don't want it to look like a Western culture. I kind of want it to give it that more of a Middle Eastern flavor. So Persian. I don't know what else to put in there to kind of differentiate, you know, what 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 the mood or the the background. But it's not going to be as important as the subject. So. And then I'm going to put comma. Uh, 
I want the the basic shape or I want the actual orientation of the photo to be more of a uh, rectangle uh, showing the body more. So I'm going to put the topic is a dramatic photo of a, so this dramatic photo is going to make it more look more photographic than it will um, comic. And then I'm kind of giving it the mood. I'm kind of giving it just a basic description. Like I said, you don't want to say it's got a big face and, you know, it's got a, he's carrying a sword and all that because you don't know where that's going to end up. And and I know that most art generative programs have problems with swords and weapons anyway, so I don't even bother. Uh, and if it puts it in there, fine, but, it, you know, we'll see. So then it uh, will have a fantasy Persian tavern background. And that's about it. And then I'm just going to say period. And then I'm going to say aspect ratio of uh, one, two. So it would be so ratio of one, two. All right. So let's see what it does. So this is based off the plugin that's going to actually generate the prompt. I don't always agree with the output because sometimes it's garbage or it's way too much. So it usually gives you two choices, and they're usually pretty decent. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to bring up um, my art generation thing. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Okay, so here's some previous stuff that I've done. So I'm going to have this up. So the mid journey part of this is hosted on the actual Discord, and I have it in a private Discord. And I invited it there. And I have a paid version. So this is what, what it's going to do. So I want to start with a prompt. So usually it's a right slash. And then imagine, and then I'm going to paste in the prompts uh, when those are ready. So I'll go back to this, and we got two different prompts, so it doesn't look too bad. Yep. So I'm going to copy and paste this part here and go back to here and paste it in. And I'm not going to worry about punctuation too much. Oops, tavern. Why did it do that? Okay. Go ahead and hit enter. I think we're good. And then I'm going to do the other one. So right slash imagine and then go back to chat GPT. So this gives us some options. So we're not stuck with just one variation of it. So, so number, this one is a tall man. So it's worded a little differently and it has a little bit different uh, terminology. So this gives you a better chance at possibly creating something more useful instead of just having the one. And hit Control V, hit Enter, let that do its thing. So it's already starting to uh, to write or to build the, the first prompt. You get four different versions. And then this bottom one is gonna start here shortly. But as this is building, I just want to tell you that this part up here, all this word crafting, you can do this manually. You can, you know, keep it short and sweet. Um, preferably, you don't want to go over a certain amount. Like this is probably the maximum. If you go any more than this, the it's not going to do anything for the generative art. They, it kind of loses, kind of like a chat GPT. It's limited on characters. I think it's 32 tokens or characters or something like that, or words or phrases. So if you get too wordy like this, you might not get the results that you want. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these. Eh, these aren't too bad. They look pretty nice. I like this one with the potion and maybe this one down here. But I think this one kind of encapsulates the the person I'm trying to you know, look for. I don't know why he's got that potion in his hand. Maybe it's a drink. So I'm going to go ahead and just generate that one because that's the one I like out of these four. This one down here on the left isn't bad. So I might do that one. So that's number three. So number three and number two are probably the most useful ones out of this set of four. 
And then this one up here is waiting its turn to generate. So I have this in set in slow motion. I do have minutes where I can actually make it crank things out faster, but I don't need that at normally. So I don't use up my my allotted minutes for generating stuff faster. And that's kind of what you're getting with the paid version as you kind of get that faster generation. You have access to beta stuff, but nine times out of 10, you don't need all that. It's the only reason I have this uh, paid version is so I can generate stuff if I need to at a quicker rate and I can, you know, use it. Now on the actual use for this art, this is all going to be personal. And you notice I didn't say in the style of JR token or anything like that. I just said, you know, D&D, &D, and that usually takes care of like 80% of what your needs are. I don't have to specify an artist. And that's where a lot of people are getting pissed off is because you're you're pulling on these uh, these uh, artists and, and they're not getting paid or recognized. The other thing is it's trained on certain models or certain um, text and certain pictures that came from copyright artists. So that's why there's such an uproar and everyone's mad. But what I'm noticing is like, if you're using this for your own personal use and you're not trying to sell it or pass it on your, you know, as your own, or you say up front, hey, a lot of this stuff is AI generated. That's generally pretty cool. I mean, that's nice to do that. Uh, I don't know if it, you know, the community agrees. A lot of people get pissed about that. But what I'm starting to notice, though, is people are getting pretty good at spotting which art is not original and which isn't. And they know what stuff has been created by a chat GPT or AI. So we have a lot of, uh, of artificial intelligence detectives out there nowadays. They said, oh, did you use chat GPT to make that? And I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. And then, yeah, I thought so. It looks just like something you would see from there. And so what you can do with that is go back to ChatGPT and say, hey, please rewrite this, but don't write this to look like you did it, damn it. You know, you can actually go in and, and change the wording around a little bit. And you don't want to plagiarize something, but you definitely want to make it your own so you can go back and fix and change things. But you can ask ChatGPT to not make it uh, sound just like a ChatGPT response. Uh, that's something I've learned in recent months here. So I've probably been doing this stuff for about three or four months. It's been a journey. I mean, I've doing it, been doing it longer, but I'd say more effectively I've been doing it or more, you know, more, more useful anyways to me in the last couple months. So it takes a while to get used to how these things work and how they don't work. So it's creating this second set of images, which I'm very curious. So it's at 62%. So what I'll do with this information is once I have this stuff, I'll download it to my hard drive, and then I'm going to take and make a token out of it, and then I'll use this information here or this image as a handout. So when the players go into the adventure, they see this picture of this guy, and they're like, hey, he's got a drink, and you know he's uh, coming over and offering us some money for to do a tour for him. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Yeah, that's not bad. I like, I want to say this one maybe and this one. This one is okay. This one, no. I don't, this looks like he's a party reveler or something. I don't know. This one looks a little weird because he's holding a light, and I'm not sure why that is. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stick with, maybe I'll do this third one. But I don't need any more than that. I think that's a little overkill. So I think the best one, though, out of these three is this one. I think this one kind of encapsulates what we're looking for and this one here. So I'm just going to open this up all the way. And I'm going to right-click, save the image. I'm going to save it to my Downloads folder. It's a PNG file. But one thing you want to start doing, if you're going to do a bunch of this, is renaming this. So this is Erevin underscore NPC. And that way you have a name for it. It's not just XYB35 or this huge long freaking description. So you, this is helpful. And then you start doing this up front. It's way easier because when you put it in Fantasy Grounds, it's going to get confusing. So I'll hit save on that. And then I'll go to a website like... Uh, what is that? Uh, roll advantage, token stamp. We'll do that. We'll go to that website 
And what I'm going to do is drag that image into this area. So I want to go to wherever it is on my hard drive. Okay, so it's this photo right here. And then drag it to the actual token stamp. So like I said, I would do all of these at once, not just one at a time. It just takes too long. So here's the image. So I want a couple different images. So I'm going to bring this up a little because I want to see his face a little bit more. So I think that's a really good like little kind of token for him, like just for like a, you know, just to show his face and part of the background. I think that's good for that. So I'm going to hit download. The actual dimensions that are for this website is 256 by 256, which is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and hit down, and that's going to do the token part. Yeah, no problem, man. If this is stuff I've been kind of researching and planning and trying to figure out a, a good way to do this stuff. So, Okay, so that's that. And then the 99... So now I'm going to change this ring, or I'm going to change this image to a ring. So that way we can make a token out of it. And then I'm going to reposition and make this a little bigger because I want to see more of his face. And this will be a, a, the actual token that we might use. And that will be that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit download on that. And now I'm going to take it the extra mile and go to Canva and actually add this as some sort of way to so create a new design. I want to make it square. And then I don't need that. And I don't, yeah, I'll leave those up just in case. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pictures that I generated. I'll minimize this. I'm going to take the pictures that I've generated and make some content out of it using the Canva app. So I use Canva quite a bit to put stuff together. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the assets from Canva into this so I have some a working space. So I'm just going to drag all of these over in case I want to use them in something. So go ahead and grab this, take it over there, and close that. Grab these images, grab this one, and I may not use all of these, but I'm uploading them now in case I need to use them for other things later. So that way I don't have to do this you know, every single time. So I might use some of these for other things, but I don't need the token right now. And I might use this, but I kind of want the full picture. So I'll, And then I don't want to expand it that much. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And then this is going to be my panel. And then from here, I might put a border on it. And I might do some color changes or whatever. Or you can use it in GIMP. You can take this and, and put this in GIMP. So I'll use this as my kind of my template. And then I'll just build around it. I'll make a frame. Let's see. I can do some kind of, like, there's all kinds of assets that I can use here. So I might put... Let's go with some uh, smoke or whatever, or maybe uh, mist. Let's do that. So here's some mist here. So maybe you want to add a little bit of dust. So here's some gold dust. You know, we can do that. We can put that on here. Shrink this down. And just kind of put that on there to kind of give it a little bit of, you know, and then maybe bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to fade this out so that it's not so overwhelming. So you can do stuff to kind of embellish the, the, the look of this. And maybe you want these golden things here. You can do that. So I can put this over here like this and then make put that in the, kind of like the background. Or I can make this a little bigger so it covers more area. But then what I want to do is take and re-add the image from my asset. So if I go back over to the stuff that I just uploaded, bring this image back over. I'm going to tell this to basically edit the image. I'm going to remove the background and it's going to relay it, layer it on top. And it will look like those coins are actually behind, you know, behind them instead of in front. 
So I want to go ahead and do that and just redrag this in. And what you can see here is you kind of have this layered effect. It kind of gives it that, you know, the extra oomph that you want to give it the, you know, the variety and the stuff that you want it to look like. So this might be one of the handouts that I, I give out. So this is that. And then if you wanted to advertise this, you can, you know, you can use this as, oh, here's his token. You know, you could use that as a kind of like a, a way to, to show what you're doing with this. And this might just be a profile picture. So maybe you'd use this for your player, you know, like a kind of like a portrait. You know, you could do stuff like that, like showcase different parts of the adventure or the, for the background, you can put in, you know, whatever you want. But I'm going to go ahead and render this, but I'm going to render it as a PNG file. And I'm going to make sure I don't render this white border because I don't want that. And as a matter of fact, I could take this and kind of change it up and put some white around here. So let me do that, and I'll show you what, what I'll do with this. So I'll take this information, and then I'm going to use these uh, this stuff here. And what I will do is put, like, clouds or something around the edges. So let's say I want this to look more artistic and less textbook. And I'll start adding this stuff, like you know, wherever you think you want it. And you do like that kind of stuff, and then later on you can come back and cut it out, and it will look really cool. Like you can make a transparency out of it, essentially. So I'm going to take that and you know put in these different cloud formations around the edges, so that it's not so textbook looking, and it has some substance to it. And when you go to put it in Fantasy Grounds or into a, any sort of program for that matter, uh, this will really, really bring it out so that it kind of has more of a natural feel to it. Okay, so now that we're done embellishing it and we got all this stuff going on, now what we're going to do is go to Share. I'm going to download it. And this is going to be a transparent background because I don't want all this white back here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Download. And what that'll do is it'll download it to my hard drive, and then I'll bring it into a program such as, um, you know, anything that you can use to, to cut out the background if you want. So I will do that. Now that it's complete, I'm going to click here to bring it up. And let me go to show. Okay, so show in folder. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, when you actually render it without the background. So it kind of has this white stuff. So what we can do with that is we'll take that and we'll use that as a color to cut out uh, when we're using a, another um, program. So that'll make it so you can actually cut that out and, and use that as your, you know, the stuff you want to cut out. So I'll take this one, this design two, right click on it. I'm going to open it up with GIMP just as an example. So this is kind of taking your information that you're generating and taking it to the next level, which is to make the art and all that stuff. So if you don't have the time to make it yourself or you don't have the money or maybe your um, favorite artist that you commission from doesn't have an open commission. So that's one of the things I believe that um, we forget when we start saying, oh, you guys are, you guys are cheating. You guys are, you know, stealing our art, that sort of thing. But what drives that uh, quite often is that you don't have an open artist or the, like the guy that you want to make your cover is not available, you know, and you got a deadline or maybe you have something that you, you need to get done. And if it's for personal use, I don't see a problem with it. You know, if you're going to do it commercially, that might be an issue. But, you know, there again, there's there's reasons why people resort to this type of thing. And I think some of it is, or a little bit of it is that, you know, people have their needs and they want them needs met. And if the artists are tied up with other projects, they can't do much, you know, for you at that time. You're going to have to wait a year sometimes just to get the artwork. So it just depends on what your, you know, what the needs are. But anyways, I got this uh, in in GIMP. So what I can do here is I can add an alpha layer. So I go to layer and you go to transparency. It already has the alpha layer. 
So I don't have to add it, but if it was a different file format, you could do that. Now I'm going to use the magic wand and just select the color that I want to get rid of. So this is where you can kind of make this a custom, you know, you can make this kind of custom looking and more interesting when you import it into Fantasy Ground. So it's not just a block, you know, or, or any virtual tabletop, depends on what you're doing. So this is just a kind of a way that you can do that. I'm kind of just getting rid of the clouds that I put in there. And that kind of makes these areas kind of pop and it kind of gives it more of that that laid out look and not just a generic you know layout. And you can do the same thing in here. So once I'm done, I'm going to hit File, Save As, or actually Export. And then it's already at PNG, but I want to rename this. So we're going to do Aravin underscore handout underscore, we'll say D&D &D or something like that. That way it's not just a, you know, a, a weird file name. And that's where I think people get kind of lazy when they're doing this is, you know, they do that and they don't realize it later. They have to go back and fix that or find it. And I'll turn the compression level down and just go ahead and hit export. So that's another way to make content uh, for Fantasy Grounds. So now that you have all that, if you're going to use a platform like Fantasy Grounds, you have to put it in the directories. So if I go to the library, or excuse me, I'm going to go to the yeah library assets. And then right now, I don't have anything allocated for this campaign. But I can go ahead and click on folder. And if I had a, something in this campaign folder, I could do that. So here's the desert biome. Here's images. I don't have anything in images yet. So what I'm going to do is bring that stuff in that I've edited already from the program itself. So that's that. But I want to open up another instance. And let's go with File Explorer. And then we're going to go with Downloads and then wrong folder. Okay, so I want to grab this and that and that and that. So these are the pictures that I want. And I hit copy and I'm going to bring this over to here and hit paste. Now I don't want that token, these two tokens. I don't I don't need two for that matter. But one is actually a portrait. So I'm going to change the name to Aravan. Aravan underscore PRT underscore zero one. So that way you can find this stuff in Fantasy Grounds. And you're not constantly looking. No, I'm going to put um, Arab. This is important, actually. It's a very important part of doing these long projects if you're going to do this. So there's that. And then we're going to make this a capital T. And we'll call this 01 because we don't need the other one. So there's Aravind token 01. So these aren't going to stay there. I'm going to actually put those in the correct folders they belonged in. So this would be something that you might, you know, you might need for project or whatever. So this is the images folder and those are the images. But what we need to do is we need a tokens folder and we need another folder for the portrait if we want to use it for a, a player, you know, a PC. So what we're going to do is move that stuff around on the back end. So this, the images that are here will stay, but this portrait image will go in a different folder. And same with this token. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these or cut cut these out of here. And then what I'm going to do is go to the Fantasy Grounds. And this is the main portrait area. So I'm going to go to Portraits. And these are custom-made portraits. And I'm going to hit Paste in here. So let me hit Control-V. Uh, where did they go? Okay. So this is the portraits, but I don't want the token in here. So I'll cut that. And then I'm going to go back to the main directory 
and put the actual um, token in the tokens folder. So do I have one? Yep. So here's my tokens folder. Uh, you can put it in whatever fol subfolder you want. So here's one I have for custom. And I'm going to hit Control V or paste. And there's that. So now that I've moved those where they belong, now I'm going to hit this refresh. And that adds it to your campaign. And you get something called campaign folder. Now when you open this up, it's now kind of a part of the campaign. So then what you're going to do is send those over as assets into your campaign itself. So if you wanted to, for instance, images or items, oh, images, I'm going to make another group. So this would be, let's go with uh, Desert Adventure, since we don't really have a good working title. Okay, now you have Desert Adventure. Get out of editing it. And now we can import files, or we can drag them individually, however you want to do it. So I'm just going to take this one, which is that uh, edited version, and drop that in there. So now this becomes like an asset or a picture or a handout that I can actually give the player. So it says Erevan handout. It's perfect. And then over here, I can put Erevan because I want it to... Oh, when I share this image, I don't want it to show that. I just want to show his name. Or we can put mysterious figure or mysterious person. That would be better because that's what we're going to introduce him as first. Because he, they don't know his name. Mysterious. Okay. So that will only show this title instead of his actual name in the beginning. So that's what that looks like. Now, if you want to take this to the next level to make this more interesting, you can also go into the map tools part of this and add effects to this. So maybe you want a little mist going by, or you know, maybe you want rain in the background, whatever it is, you can add the effect. So maybe some mist like that. And then maybe you only want it down here or whatever. So you hit mask. And then I'm only going to have the mist showing up around the edges here. So I'm going to hold the the uh, Alt key and just draw. I'm just going to draw the areas that I want the mist to, to be in. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just kind of trace around only where I want that mist to go. Something like this. I mean, you don't have to do this, but this is just a way to make things neater. So now I'm going to go ahead and change that. And then I'm going to go ahead and blur it. So it kind of blends in more. And there you go. So you can kind of make this interesting. Is adding effects part of what? No, not at all. It's just, I'm doing that just as a part of Fantasy Ground. So... Chat GPT is just going to create the image, or at least the prompt to make the image. But as far as the effects go, no, it has nothing to do with it. All right, so there, there you go, guys. I think I've rambled quite a while. Probably looks like a couple hours. <laughs> Didn't mean it to go this long, but hopefully some of this information is going to help you. And don't forget to save your work. So if you've done a lot of work and you're not sure how much or what time Fantasy Ground is going to save, you can do a right slash save command and hit enter, and that'll save your work. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> I figured that. That's a good question now. People will ask that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. This is the proper way to exit Fantasy Ground. So you right click, you go to exit session, return to launcher. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was only about ChatGPT. I use uh, Adobe, and I use um, one of the other. Uh, what is that? Uh, Foundry. You know, I don't want, I don't care about this fantasy grounds crap. I want Foundry or I want Roll20. You know, it's like, whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Enjoy the last part of your um, vacation 